Welcome back, class. I'm Matt, your guide here on Y Caliber, and we are playing Shadowrun 3rd Edition. I almost said Returns. We're playing Shadowrun 3rd Edition. <laughs> we've got our GM, Jared, and we've got the full complement tonight. We're joined by Steven Siddall, Feral Knights, the other Matt, and of course, Mike. Everyone's here. Hooray! Yay! Yeah. Woohoo! The other Matt didn't want to be happy, but we're all here nope. anyway. <laughs> Maybe his microphone isn't working. I wouldn't want to be happy either if I started no, I'm pretty at 6 sure it's I am. <laughs> pretty sure it's not. Mm, pretty sure it is. <laughs> all right. Right. So, all right, since this is our first actual real session of the game, why don't each one of you take a moment to introduce your characters to the audience and one another? Well, let's... Uh, yep. let's uh, Let's go out down the list. Let's have Steven go first. Ah, God, I'm being put in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm playing Fane, who has no relation to people named Fane that may have been in previous games. Or so, so he says. So he says. Uh, he's a troll. He's from the forests outside of Seattle. Uh, that's a, lar a loud alarm. Is that mine? I think so. <laughs> I Are guess you getting it's arrested, Matt? Uh, no, it's just outside the window. I'll mute uh -huh. my microphone till it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> okay. The American cops come to get him. All right, but uh, yes, he's a troll from the forest. Uh, he's a bear shaman. He has come to the big city in order to help people because he's just that kind of a guy. Um, but he's oddly pragmatic about his pacifism in that he's a shadow runner, so at odds with himself or the world. Who knows? But he's a friendly sort. Just right. a troll. Thank you. Uh, let's move down to... I'm just using the TeamSpeak list, so Farrell. Okay. Um, Azume is a little bit of a uh, flighty sort. Sometimes spaces out here and there. Um, the big thing about her is that she doesn't really talk about her past much because there are times where there's kind of a few gaps in the memory. Um, but she's very, very skillful with a bow. And... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> she has an awesome bow. That's the name she of has it. a very awesome bow, actually. Um, I was very lucky to get that. Thank you, Jared. Um... Yes, uh, she's known for the distinctive... The, the very distinctive uh, use of archery. Um... Very fast on her feet, very strong. Um, and but she, she holds her bow to... sideways. I, yes, I know, man. She she is so gangster that she holds it sideways sometimes. Um, <laughs> and it's pretty well known that when she punches somebody, there's a very loud metallic clanging noise. I remember that. <laughs> um, Norio, tell us about yourself. Okay, Norio is an adept ninja. He does come from Japan, like most ninjas do. And also, like most ninjas, he is the last of his clan because they were all brutally murdered in a surprise attack led by his adoptive brother, who he has tracked to America to revenge upon. All right, thank I you. We're in, coming. we're in America, right? We are in Seattle. Close and... enough. Mr. Drysdale, who are you? Who is Mr. Drysdale? He's Mr. Drysdale. Is he a and horse? That's the entire introduction, introduction. You don't need to know any more about he Mr. Drysdale yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Time that's Mr. Drysdale. Right. He's been doing this for a while. He's very good at what he does. And uh, The best, you might say? No, no. Okay. Clearly not. <laughs> around. Nothing's gonna ever keep me down. And he's probably been working with most of you for a while now. All right. And uh, well, thanks if for we power posing job, our way into my background. Through him. That's true. He is the face, the face of our team. And what a face! Look at that handout. I know. Look at that. Look at that handsome gentleman. That is a good handy. And what about Darcy? Uh, Darcy is a fashion consultant, and he owns a makeover business, 
in Seattle. Uh, he is as innocuous as possible. Uh, Vandal is a guy who wears a leather jacket and a motorcycle helmet and blows things up just by looking at them. He's got a chip on his shoulder and he is trying to find who, uh, rather which Megacorp ordered the hit on his father, who was a low-ranking wage mage working for a certain Megacorp in Seattle. So he's out for revenge and using his fashion business and shadow running as alternate avenues to try and find the information he needs. He's he's got a lot of anger. And that's me. An angry orc, what are the odds? I know. <laughs> Way to play to the stereotype. <laughs> Has to be done. <laughs> All right. So that is that is our team. Uh, you folks at home will note that the group has no Decker um, because playing a Decker is kind of like playing a completely different game from everyone else. So as necessary, as necessary, there will be an NPC Decker for the group. I was going to play one, but you know, short game, no need to go through all that hassle. The NPC Decker is named Carlos Danger. <laughs> you know, you laugh, but he is. Of course, he is. Uh, Carlos Danger is, in fact, the sixth member of the group. And Suzu Suzume gets all sorts of weird text messages from him. He is a he's a weaselly little guy who, despite his name being Carlos, is not even remotely Hispanic. <laughs> Shameful. He's he's very excitable with no real social skills, and yeah, he probably has like, he probably does hit on Suzume all the time. And whenever we meet him in person, he has this weird like fetish for his fedora. But he's oh, <laughs> oh. I heard that Carlos Danger has a centaur body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! In this dark future, there is no Reddit, thankfully. <laughs> That's the one thing keeping it from dystopia. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to join the group in media res. Basically, what what happens is that you all receive uh, during the course of your, you know, your your whatever you guys do during the day, whether it's not be awake or, you know, fashion run run your <laughs> run your aesthetics store. <laughs> or, uh, you know, you, you get this little montage of, like, <laughs> Darcy is doing someone's hair, and <laughs> Fane is, is setting some, you know, street kid's broken bone, and, um, I don't know, presumably Norio is lurking in the shadows. Um, if there are any, yes. <laughs> all of you get calls. Uh, it's, it's from Carlos Danger. Who insists, by the way, <laughs> it's always Carlos Danger. It's never just Carlos. It's certainly never just Danger. Of course not. He very excitedly like, oh, guys, guys, I, I got I got a job lined up. It's going to be great. Oh, my God. It's going to be the best thing. So good. Easy money. Easy money. Easy money. Easy money. Easy money. Easy money. And he hangs up. And about 10 seconds later, he calls back. He's like, all right, I forgot to say where it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> And and you, he gives you guys an address. It's it's the meet is at a bar in uh, not exactly a nice part of town, but not you know you're not really likely to get shot just walking around. That's a plus. But yeah, so no, you know, there, don't like, shoot anybody in the face in broad daylight. Like ten at night. Darcy finishes up with his clients and transforms into his vandal alter ego goes outside to the back there's all these awesome music playing he opens his garage and uh you know revs up his dodge scoot <laughs> does does he have an animated transformation sequence not yet but he's working on it it's you know he does have the makeover spell he could just use it on himself in fact he does he uses the makeover spell on himself <laughs> Lights are flashing. It's, you know, sort of softly lit. There's bubbles and, you know, different colors. A slow body pan. <laughs> yeah, a slow body pan from the feet up to the uh, to the helmet, which closes over his face. 
And the Dodge and scoop. And then he, then he uh, suffers the backlash and wakes up two hours later. Yeah, he gets the drain, <laughs> knocks himself out. Yeah, yeah. And takes his scoot out to the bad, to the bad part of town we're meeting up. The, the not the not worst really part bad. of town we're meeting up. The mediocre part of town. It's not. It's not downtown. He, he yeah, very it's carefully. Not all, bright, not all bright lights. Very carefully locks not, his scoot to a, a it's not light like roll. Redmond. Yeah, it's gonna no say. one's gonna steal your scoot. Uh, it's a pretty <laughs> awesome scoot. No one's gonna steal it. It's locked to the I'd light pole. Anyway. About my it's, rape, yeah. it's possibly the least cool vehicle in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't like know. Just fourth an... edition. Fourth edition. It's not it's fourth a edition. Segue. This isn't fourth edition. <laughs> There's no fucking segue. <laughs> the law has come down. <laughs> What if there's a Segway in 5th Segway, edition? Segways were never introduced in this universe. <laughs> okay. okay. Alright. Uh, uh. So, you guys have... Most of you have probably been to this particular bar before. It's a semi-popular runner hangout. It's a good place to do business. You know, you go inside, the, the, uh, the bartender knows, knows Drysdale at the very least. Vandal is uh, he... sipping a cocktail through a straw that goes through Inter a crack in his helmet. Emergency induction <laughs> port. <laughs> port. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you got the, the bartender sort of gestures back towards the back. It's like, it's a really like old style, like, you know, wooden booths pub. Um, although the booths are kind of a bit old and have seen better days. Um, most people in the in in the bar are either semi shifty looking people, i.e., shadowrunners, or are people who are slumming it but not brave enough to go really slumming it. Hmm, posers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Mario emerges from the shadows right next to Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> Darcy Greetings. tries. So does, Norio, does Norio wear ninja clothes all the time? Uh, good question. <laughs> does he just show up in black pajamas? <laughs> and that's how Norio got the distinctive style flaw. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll say when they're not shadow running, he at least has the mask down. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> He's our. Uh, all right. He's our trout. So yeah, damn it. <laughs> yeah, he's well, dead man. God damn it! <laughs> Man, this is like a shadow running thing, right? So it makes sense to wear your shit to it. No. 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 Oh. This is a meet. This is like going and talking to a potential client. Okay, fine. Then he. Well, this he, is where you he, want to put on. Trust, your, like, okay, Mario would me. know this. Okay, he... he is he is then wearing normal clothes, but it's honestly not going to be that much better because he looks like he's from feudal Japan. <laughs> <sighs> he's wearing his casual ninja suit. <laughs> <laughs> he can tell not, he it... doesn't own anything else. He's got his you least can tell village headband has... on around his neck. Goku wa ninja desu yo. I'm telling you, I got two words for you: khaki hakama. <laughs> okay, so it's all give, the rage. People give Norio a lot of weird looks. It's not the strangest thing they've ever seen somebody wear, but it's close. At least he's actually <laughs> Japanese. Konnichiwa, Johnson san. Konnichiwa, <laughs> Shadow Rock. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, the, that was the name of the TV movie that Norio was watching earlier. Watashiwa Shadow Runner, the Joe Sekigahara story. Oh my god. <laughs> the sad part is nobody, re nobody listening to this is going to understand what the hell we're talking about. I know, it's terrible. Oh, uh, I'll post, so, I'll post right, a link so, in the comments. Okay. So, anyway, <laughs> so towards the back. Um, there are some more isolated booths, which are good places to to quietly discuss business. Um, and you and you see uh, Carlos Danger leading leaning out from one excitedly and like waving you guys over. I hope he's wearing pants this time. <laughs> Everybody is looking at me. Should I have gotten other clothes? 
Yes. I can yes. get you a new outfit later on. Drop by my shop. <laughs> I, I would I just, appreciate that. Re really quickly, though, uh, J Jared, you, you do know who Carlos Danger is, right? Yes, I do. We all know okay. who Carlos Danger is. That's cool. the joke. Roll up on this. <laughs> okay, just making sure. We're all up on this. Just because I'm Canadian does not mean I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Carlos Danger is an international phenomenon. It's true. He's a man of mystery, but we know a little too much about him. <laughs> <laughs> we well, wish he was a little more mysterious. Similarly, you know a little bit more about this Carlos Danger than you really want to. Yeah, Good. I figure every message he sends us, there's an attachment. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a really good decker. It does not so. seem right for a man to do this with a pillow. I bet, and he keeps showing us his deck, and we don't <laughs> want to see it. So you guys get to the, you get to the booth, and uh, Carlos Danger is sitting there in uh, a ratty t-shirt and gym shorts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, gym, the gym shirt is like three sizes too big. He's not a large man. He's not Doesn't large have a man. pony on it. A cyber pony. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes <laughs> Darcy tries to suppress a shudder at the fashion faux pas going on here. <laughs> and, uh, sitting across from him in the booth is a uh, a man of basically basically the blandest human being you've ever seen in your entire life. He's average height. Brown hair, brown eyes, Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the glare off of Carlos Danger's legs is actually quite unnerving. <laughs> um, the man sitting, he's sitting there in a suit. You know, sort of a semi-casual business suit. Ah, shit. <laughs> What does she want, Mike? <laughs> there has been no Japanese in this, in this dialogue. Kore wa boku no katana. Sugoi desu yo. Um, yeah, so, I mean, what are you guys doing? I'm gonna slide into the booth. I'm okay. going to slide into the booth, but stay as far as I can from Carlos. Fane will have to kind of, like, crouch at one end. <laughs> yeah, it's not really big enough for you. Though this will allow me to confirm with uh, Carlos Danger his uh, refill on his acne prescription. Even even, <laughs> uh, even Darcy is a bit big for the seats. Nora will obligingly appear between Suzume and Carlos Danger so that she doesn't have to sit right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Drysdale will sit down at a table next to the booth because, come on, sit at the table. <laughs> with, with the drag never. the table over. <laughs> <laughs> he does, and he also sits on his chair backwards. Damn. He writers into smooth. it. <laughs> Is he, he going to really rap serious it? for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> so are you... Come on, so we get... you guys have all settled in. Um, you know, the man sitting sitting across from now at least four of you <laughs> he's, he's, his side of the booth is just him <laughs> he, sort of, he looks around at all of you and, and his expression is pretty much unreadable it's hard to tell anything about him and he says oh, good, meet, good evening uh, my name's Mr. Johnson good evening Mr. Johnson now, I'm in the uh, market for a group of professionals. Another slow look across all of you. My uh, associates need an individual extracted. Uh, hopefully it would be a relatively simple matter. Certainly for individuals of your skills. We really hope no elevators are involved in this. Uh, 
my I've been authorized to offer you each uh, We're, I've been authorized to offer you each 25,000 new yen. Cash on delivery, of course. Of course. That seems fair. It, is that an illustration of Mr. Johnson? Yes, that's Johnson's son. So do, does anybody want to, you know, do anything? Do you well... Try and figure anything about, about this guy, or try to negotiate. Where's our face? You're a face. Mine's behind my mask, which I'm not wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have minimal social skills. I have like four charisma. Like two etiquette. I should probably leave this to Mr. Dresden. Of course it should be. He's the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so get yeah, facing. Well, so, okay. Yes, go let's let's talk face. about compensation a little bit later. For now, let's go over what you want us to do in detail. My Who client. are we getting? Where are we getting him from? Where does he have to go? My clients need a young woman uh, uh... brought out. <laughs> Is his client actually Carlos Danger? <laughs> Maybe. You don't know. <laughs> I know and we don't ask. Mafu. <laughs> My clients need a new waifu. <laughs> Turns out we're getting a new body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know with Simpsons chips, you never know what you can do. All right, it's very they need her focus, her. focus. They need, young, they need this particular young woman extracted. There will be a uh, a social event tomorrow night at which she will be present. They would like a public removal. And then you're simply to bring her to uh, to this address here. Any slides over a. Uh, Slides over a pad that has an address listed on it. Mike, you're totally failing on having your uh, token impersonated. Furthermore, who's playing Peggle? Who indeed? <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, Dresden will take the paper and won't even look at it. Just folds it, puts it inside of his black jacket. Mm, I need another picture. Uh, <laughs> He... <laughs> He's then going to ask for some information on what this social event is. And the name of the target. Ideally a picture. Something he can use later. <laughs> wow. He doesn't ask that. He's a family man. <laughs> Carlos, perhaps. Carlos, danger. Before I provide you with any further information, I need to have a certain level of commitment from your group. How how public an extraction are it we talking about here? He says to Norio, understanding him completely. Ah, shit. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty I Norio compliments him on his Japanese. <laughs> Gaijin, oh, son! Oh, Japanese are very good! Damn, you guys are racist. So anyway, that was actual anyway, Japanese. Anyways, there were questions being asked, and no, we cannot provide that level of commitment without more information. Uh, roll negotiation. Da, 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 da. I was actually waiting for Susan May to just look at me. Go, I don't speak Japanese, moron. Your target number <laughs> is six. Uh, is that a success test? Yep. Yeah. And what's your, um... I got a six negotiation. Okay. This is what, six and six? Yep. Yeah. Do I need to worry about the pull type? No. Leave that as none. Oh, oh. come on. Oh. What? 
Mulligan? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem inclined to budge on. He wants. Oh he my god, we should hand solo to... him. <laughs> We're not going to shoot him. Why not? <laughs> But okay, so he's not gonna budge, huh? Not on that. Not he's some you. kind of if if he wants good faith, he needs to show some good faith. Mm, well, I can make an attempt. I uh, we need to get to get our uh, commitment. We need at least to understand the risk a bit more. So That's perhaps true. perhaps we could say that, um, or at least Fane will try with his piddly negotiation skills. Uh, <laughs> He's a friendly troll um, to elicit a little bit uh, more information as to how, uh, what kind of uh, opposition they could expect. Because, you know, a public spectacle is going to draw a lot of attention to them. Okay. Your target number is seven. <clears throat> okay. I, obviously, he's racist. racist. <laughs> <That's what> <laughs> <laughs> He sits back, kind of steeples his fingers together on the tabletop. Can I try again? <sighs> Can I shoot him? <laughs> <laughs> Can you, uh, you could shoot him, but that ribs. wouldn't really be a good idea. It would really turn this adventure on its head. Uh, yeah, no it would be bad for your reputation, too. And we all just go home. End of <laughs> session. Yeah, that's yeah. that's it. Sorry. That's Edge of the Empire <laughs> next week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Does so, anybody else want to try? Well, I have no negotiation skills whatsoever. I'm just wondering, like, do we need to be seen taking her? Or does she simply need to be taken from a public place? She needs to be taken from a public place. It needs to be obvious that she has been kidnapped. Oh. All right. Is is she going to ring her dad and tell him that she's being taken? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Not if you prevent her from using her phone. Oh boy. Her dad turns out to be Elvin Le Liam Neeson. <laughs> and we're all dead. Vandal, did you want to try this? I have no negotiation skills. I was just curious. I, oh, I, I, have, I can okay. default to etiquette. You can. I have some etiquette, but not much. I have a specialty in Japanese corporate etiquette, but I don't think that would help here. Really? <laughs> well, he he's... fidgets. He fidgets with a with a ring on his on his uh, pinky finger. What and kind then... of a ring? Uh, roll me an intelligence test. Okay. What's my... That's basically perception. Yeah, do I need, like, a target number, or what am I doing here? Open test. So, alright. Yeah, that'll do it. Um... Oof. This Dracta <laughs> really does it. Wow. Mr. Dresden was married once. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's the way. Uh, both of you recognize the ring. Um, you've seen it before in, in your in your shadow work. It's the sort of ring that uh, that some Fuchi employees wear. Ah, I see. Vandal slowly turns to look at Mr. Drysdale. Not that you can tell, because he's got the helmet on. Yeah. The stig turns to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> the helmet slightly turns towards Mr. Drysdale. Mr. Drysdale is curious as to what car the stig is driving this week. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, maybe you've wandered into a Daft Punk video. Maybe. I was originally going to have three lights positioned on the front of the helmet in a V-shape. Nario's got nothing. And then Stephen yeah. Colbert dances Not a damn by. thing. <laughs> so, it's a Fuchi ring, so he's probably working for Fuchi. 